I should just probably apologize in advance. This is just going to be a complete crazy train. Make sure you have your beverage. Make sure you buckle your seatbelt before we depart the station. And all of the good things. I am going to ask you to do all of the things you know what they are. And this is my update for the Happy Hour Project Pan. Okay, so this project was created by Deb B and Danny's, Danny from Danny's Makeup. These ladies put together this amazingly cool project, kind of centered around the fact that Danny was a bartender. Well, so was I. And they decided that they were going to do this in collab with the Fantastic Ladies. The Ladies and the Fantastic Ladies page are going to be linked in the description box, as they always are. This started November 12th of 2022. is going to end November 12th of this year, because that is National Happy Hour Day. Now... This is a roulette, roulette style project that was supposed to be five prompts at a time because it is five o'clock somewhere. Unfortunately, my slow butt will not hit all the prompts that way. So I am hijacking this project completely and doing the crazy train thing that I do. Like I said, I should probably apologize in advance. So Deb, Danny, I am so sorry, but I want to touch all the prompts. So I've got a really weird thought process going into this one. Yeah, I know you're going to all be subjected to it. It's insanity. The social media hashtag is happy hour PP. Now, before I go off on all of my tangents, we're going to start with what I had in the project. I had the um, prompt regular, so it's an item I use every day. I brought in a mascara for that. This is the Kush Milk Kush mascara that you actually saw in my empties because I did stop using this on June 30th. And it was in my empties bag. So I got 49 uses on that. And that's not bad because that was a smaller tube. That wasn't full size. So that is completed and rolling out of this project at this time. Now, the next thing I have in is rum and coke. For that, because this is supposed to be the perfect pairing, two items that you always use together, I brought in my Lancome Duo, my Sills Booster, and my Definisils. And I do use the waterproof of the Definisils. They do make it in regular too, apparently. Uh, whatever. But these are the ones that I use. And so this is what I have in the project. These will still be remaining in for the rest of this month. So I am still keeping tally on how often I use them. But at the end of this month, I'm going to hit four months on them. And at that point, I'm done. And quite frankly, they won't last beyond that anyway. I'm hoping I can just eke it out for the next few weeks until I can roll these out of the project. Okay, the next thing I have in is Mule, something served in a copper cup, so an item with metallic packaging. I actually went with this hard candy liquid eyeshadow. Why? Why? So this is the iDef metallic eyeshadow in crystal. I brought this in for five uses. I have used it twice. Um, I did not, oh wow, I still have some makeup on my hand from the last video. Hmm, shocking. This is really lovely. Okay, can you see it? Jeez Louise. Here we go with the lighting again, because when don't I do that? There you go. It's really pretty, but the problem is, is that I am not a liquid eyeshadow person. So the first time I used it, I did just that with nothing else. No base, no anything, just because I wanted to see what happened. And yes, I ended up with the glitter all over my face. Yes, it cracked. Yes, it wore away. Then I used it again as just a little bit of a topper, and that seemed to work a little bit better. I still need to putz with it. I've only used it the two times. I put it in for five. I'm leery of it because I don't want to do it and have it mess up an eye look that I've already put together. But at the same time, it's a liquid eyeshadow and I shouldn't be afraid of it. So I really need to get those uses in and see if it's worth even keeping. It may not be for me. My eyelids just might not be the kind that work well with that kind of thing. So then I had in number two, Margarita, an item from a Latinx brand. For that, I brought in the um, Lunar Beauty Liquid Lipstick in Perfection. I brought this in for five uses. I have, this has a, the, can you see that? That it's kind of at an angle, which is a kind of fun way to apply. Um, as for the doe foot, huh, finish the sentence, that might be helpful. It is a very deep brownish color which isn't a bad thing necessarily, but I actually had put brighter lip liners under it to give it a little bit more oomph so it didn't just kind of look dumb. <laughs> Concealer lips, brownish, you know, that kind of thing. So I've gotten three out of five uses, which means that is still in the project. Then we had 
sex on the beach, dirty, dirty, something sex themed, sex themed. Wow. And I brought in the orgasm blush from NARS because that is kind of a staple in my collection. I have had it for years. I have used it for years and I couldn't find my regular size. I, if you've been watching me for any length of time, the regular size I actually had completed. I mean, completely completed one of those. Woohoo. An entire blush that I use from beginning to end, even repressed to get every last drop. So I brought in my mini. I knew I had one, but I couldn't find it. Well, you know, Angie Nyquist always says, who asked for this? We don't need this. This was one of those things that she said that about. This is the jumbo size. This is the one that I knew I had somewhere, but wasn't able to find at that point. This is the thing no one asked for because no one needs a jumbo size of this blush. Yet somehow I went and got myself one because apparently I'm a complete goofball. I had already had pan in my regular size. And honestly, from the regular size to this size, I think it was like a $10 difference. And I'm like, oh, well, okay, I use it constantly. I'll just go ahead and get the bigger size. Well, yeah, no, nobody needs it. Okay, you can't even see it on my hand. It's a shiny peachy pink, so it is a lovely everyday color. I do absolutely love the color. It works well on my skin tone, and it does kind of go with everything because there's just a hint of that peach to it, so I don't necessarily, it doesn't look too pink with warmer looks. I put it in for 10 uses. I have gotten four, and I did find this before I even did my first use, and it was brand new, so my baby one can go back in my travel bag. That is staying in the project. All right, now do you see kind of where I'm running into problems here? Is that I ended up with six things. Is that right? No, I had, no, I had five things in and I still have four of them in. I'm never going to get to everything that way. So this is where, this is where it is better to beg for forgiveness than ask permission. And I am hijacking the entire project. What I am bringing in, I've got one that's sort of normal, so we'll start with that. I'm going to bring in Keg, an item in bulky packaging or a large quantity of product. This one is what I'm bringing in. This is the Too Faced, this is the Milk Chocolate Soleil Bronzer, which is the lighter of them. And it's got a heart on it. So it's not exactly round. It's kind of round. It's not, and it's a little bit of a domed packaging which I don't know why it doesn't need to be domed. Ouch. It does have a mirror in it. That is what mine looks like. I've only swatched this. I have not yet used this. So I'm going to bring this in. Yeah, why is this domed? It doesn't need to be. Anyway, I'm bringing it in for 10 uses. This is the only normal thing I'm doing. Now, let's discuss the crazy. I'm going to be in so much trouble. I am going to bring in three things in one thing at the same time together, sort of. Clear as mud, isn't it? Four, 15, dive bar or hole in the wall bar. This is a product from a smaller or lesser known brand. Well, if you follow Deb and Danny, this is known to you. If you follow me, you, this is known to you. I am gonna bring in Alley Oop. This is a smaller brand. This is the only thing that I have from the brand. And um, this is a female-owned brand, just so you know. This is the Stack the Odds, because it's a stacked product. And the colorway is called Sassy Pants. What I am bringing in for this prompt in particular is going to be the highlighter. I have nice big pan in that. I am actually going to bring this in to try and finish it off. Now, everybody has said oh this is too dark this doesn't work as a highlighter it's too dark well i actually like it as a blush topper oh, you can't see that can you kind of see that it is it's light for you know what for a blush topper but it is a little bit darker for a highlighter let's see if i can get just but it's nice and shiny i mean it's a i don't know it's a cream highlighter i like it personally but like i said i've been using it as a blush topper not a highlighter i would like to finish that and then we are going to be bringing the same stack in for 21, which is New Year's Eve. Ringing in the new year, expose the ring or pan on an item. Well, for that, I would love to hit pan and expose the ring in the blush on this because that is the product that of this that seems to be used the least. And I'll tell you why, because that on my skin tone is actually somewhat bright. So 
I use little of it at a time. I do use it all the time, but I use very little of it. So this one's the one that I, I really at least need to hit pan on this. Okay, and then finally with this, last call. An item that is almost finished, and you're going to laugh at me for bringing this in, because that's all that's left. So you see rings, pan, you get the idea of what I want to be doing with the blush. Um, there is very little left in here. It does get a little bit messy, but this will actually last me for quite some time. Let's see if I can get a swatch of it. I use a stipple brush, so it's easier to get to. Yeah, you can't really see the swatch. It's very, very light on me. It is a great color for me, and I'm going to be sad when it's gone, but it is almost gone, and I want to finish it off. So I'm bringing in three prompts, one item. Yeah, whatever. Like I said, I am just hijacking this whole project. And it gets worse from here, you guys. So the next thing I'm going to do is bring, I'm bringing in so many prompts. Deb and Danny are going to just unfriend me. I'm sure of it. I had originally intended to bring this in. This is the Glam Light Wine Palette. It's a happy hour project. You know I'm going to bring in a, an alcohol-themed thing. The funniest part about this is I bartended for years. Like, we're talking decades, years. Um, still occasionally do. And, you know, just to help out here and there. And I don't drink. I maybe drink a couple times a year. I quit drinking almost 10 years ago. But I have alcohol-themed things. So we wanted to bring them into this project. So here's what we're starting with. I'm going to bring in... Prompt number three, which is old fashioned, an older item in your collection. As sad as this is, I haven't used this palette. Um, how many collections have this glam light come out with since this one? How long have I had this and I haven't used it yet? And it's purple. I don't even know how that happens. So for that, I am going to be bringing in this shade right here, this pink shade, Earthy. Because if this isn't my jam, I don't know what is. It's lovely. It is a lovely pinky purple. And that is so very me. So that's coming in. And I'm going to do three uses on all of these. And you're going to see why as this goes on. Because it's, it's a little out of control. Then, for Tipsy, a product you have a difficult time pronouncing. I don't necessarily, but I have heard so many people stumble over this. It's hilarious, actually. I am bringing in this shade right, right here, this one. It is called Cabernet Sauvignon. That is how it's pronounced. But a lot of times, it's just cab, because people cannot get that all out of their mouths correctly. And it almost looks like a bluish purple here. Oops. I'm making a mess. So... Those are the first two shades out of the palette. I'm bound and determined that I'm going to hit all these prompts. So that's a three-use goal. Then, Bartender, a product you can rely on or a product that never stops. Well, I know I can count on my Glam Light eyeshadows no matter what. But for this, I thought because of the Bartender theme, the shade right here is called Pour It Up. Kind of had to. And there's that one. So we're going for three uses on that one. Then, and this is where I go as off the rails as the crazy train does go. Bear with me. So for Pina Colada, oh no, this one isn't as crazy as it was. Maybe, I don't know. Anyway, Pina Colada is a drink. Yes, we know this. Um, what the, what the ladies have is Escape, which is a song by Rupert Holmes, and the lyric is getting caught in the rain, so it would be a product that wouldn't budge if you were caught in the rain. Instead, I'm kind of shifting this one. Like I said, this is where I go off the rails. So I know a person who owns a craft cocktail company. I occasionally go help out where I'm passing out samples and talking to people. I mean, that's... He needs help. He needs bodies to go do that just to do some promo. So I go with him occasionally and do that. And with my EDS, when I start to get either too tired or the pain is getting too bad, I start to either transpose words, I lose words, I forget where I am in the middle of a sentence. I sound like I'm drunk. Anyway, so I was with my friend who owns this, this business 
And we were doing, I don't even know how long it was. I mean, it was probably only like four or five hours. But I, at some point, because of just being tired or in pain or something, stopped being able to say um, pina colada. I don't know why. It's not like it's hard to say. But when I was trying to, I was listing off different things. There's Bloody Mary mixes. So you've got um, dill pickle, green olive, sriracha, uh I don't even remember what kinds, but then there's margarita mixes. So there's a regular and there's a strawberry. And then there is a pina colada mix, which for me, I would get to pee and I would forget what I was saying. So I kept trying to say Pinot Noir instead of pina colada. No, it doesn't make sense. That literally is what EDS brain does, just so you know. So for that, because I have trouble remembering the words pina colada, apparently, I decided I was going to bring in the shade Pinot Noir and when I see it again, I will point it out to you because now my vision is going again to, oh, where did it go? Okay. So I'm bringing in this shade right here with the little wine glass on it. That is Pinot Noir. And I'm bringing that in for Pina Colada because apparently when my brain gets overtired, I can't remember which one of those is which. So that's the one I'm bringing in for that for three uses. I kind of figure with what I'm doing, I'll be hitting a lot of this, this palette. Jeez Louise. Yeah. Remember? EDS brain. All right. So then the next one I'm bringing in is Mai Tai. And this is a beach or summer themed item. For this, and once again, follow the crazy train logic, I am bringing in this gorgeous shiny shade right here. See all the shiny glittery in there? That is the shade Napa. And the reason I am bringing it in is because Napa, Napa Valley, is in California. Yes, I'm pretty sure. And to me that I always think of summer when I think of California. I don't know why, but that's what my head does. Yeah, more crazy train than you ever wanted, huh? So that is the shade that I'm going to be bringing in for my tie. It's a lovely shade. It's very, very pretty. And I'm going to be bringing that in for three uses. Then we have peanuts, a product that is messy to use. <laughs> For that, I am going to bring in the shade Sparkling. See how pretty and shiny that one is too? Luckily, I'm far enough away and I don't have a good enough camera where you can tell, but every time I use a shadow like this, I end up with glitter all down my face. Yes, yes I do, because I am that skilled. So that's the shade right there that I'm going to bring in. And um, not only will use on my eyes, but will most likely be all over my face every time that I use it. Yeah, I'm a hot mess on a good day, so you can just imagine how much fun I have when there's anything glittery, sparkly, shiny, any of that stuff. It always ends up all over me. That is what I am bringing in from the wine palette. Okay, still with me? And then from here, the next thing I'm bringing in, I don't know if this is brilliant or if this is stupid, but this also has a note on it because this is the other thing that, yes, I was intending to bring in from the beginning of this project. I just haven't gotten there yet because it's taking me too long. So this is the another one of the palettes from the Glamlight collection that came out whenever. This one is obviously chocolate martini. You've seen me use the other martini palette, the one with the green olive. I used that when I was in Arizona. So these have all been on deck to be getting in this project since then. So here's what we're gonna be doing with this palette. I am bringing in, okay, champagne, a product you save for a special occasion. Well, apparently it's the whole dang palette because I haven't used this one either. Like I said, I had them set aside for this particular project, so I haven't touched them. Hmm, smart. For that, I am bringing in the shade Ganache right here. See that pretty sparkly? Oh, this is going to be a mess too. But this is the kind of shade that would be... Uh, I don't know why, but I always think gold is like a fancy thing. So I still have, it's hard to see with that there. But anyway, that's the shade that I'm bringing in. That would be a special occasion shade for me because that's not an everyday thing. I wouldn't normally go for something that deep. I don't do a ton of gold anyway, but to me, gold is fancy. And that's a deep gold, like almost a bronze. So that's my special occasion shade. And that's going in for three uses. Then we have Martini, an item with odd shaped packaging. Instead, I went with, okay, this is Creme de Coco, this middle one, and I went with it because it's got the Martini imprint. 
So I figured that's close, right? Martini imprint, martini prompt. I'm going to bring that in for three, sh three shades, three uses. Let's see if I can get through this without screwing anything up too much more. Don't bet on it. Okay. Then liquid courage, an item that intimidates you or that you need liquid courage to wear. For that, I am bringing in this one. Do you see that? That looks orange to me. That is live and lavish. This is not the first choice of color that I would ever go for, even though I do use some peaches. Eh. That's, that's a, a shimmery orange, you guys. Oh, and I kind of made it bleed, blend out, didn't I? But yeah, that's not the first shade that I'm generally going to go grab for any look I'm doing. We're going to try it three times. We're going to hope that, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with that, but that's what we're doing. Then we have karaoke night. Relate a product to a song you would sing at karaoke night. I sing along. I do not sing. Big difference. Big, big difference. So for that, to do anything at karaoke night, which I've done twice in my life. Yeah, I'm in my 50s. I've done it twice in my life. Um, and I've done it with a group of girls both times. It's the Gloria Gaynor song, I Will Survive. I could smack myself for doing that. One of the places that I worked had a karaoke night. There's certain songs you just really don't ever want to hear again. That's one of them. Um, because I have heard it too many times by too many bad singers. Just as a heads up. But it's a great girl group, girl empowerment, let's all sing together drunk song. If that's what you're looking for. So for that, for me to actually get up and do something like that. I would have to be, where is it? This shade right here. The name of this shade is Extra Lit. Yeah, that's what it takes. That's what it would take for me to get up. And I would, even if I were drinking and drunk, I probably would never get up and sing karaoke on my own, just so you know. But that's the shade. Like I said, I know my skill set. So that's a shimmery. Okay, wow. That's a shimmery pinkish color, much better than the peach. So that's coming in three times. All right. Then we've got Ladies Night, a product, a product that takes your look from day to night. Well, could be, but what I am bringing in is the shade Girls Night Out. For Ladies Night, Girls Night Out? I mean, come on. Kind of had to on that one. Hopefully my crazy explanations are actually making sense to you guys. I'm sure they are. Okay, wait. Down there. I, I'm going the wrong way when I'm swatching. But that's okay. We'll just, you know. All right. So that's coming in for three uses also. So if you think about it, I have got these two that are ending at the end of the month. I've only got like one or two uses on this, two on this. I still got quite a few. Okay, yeah, I'm way over five. I can't even justify it. But technically, I'm only bringing in four items. So it's kind of close to five, right? Sort of? Yeah, there's no. I can't even pretend that I'm justifying this in any logical way, shape, or form. I literally just wanted to be able to hit all of the prompts. So I just, like I said, completely hijacked the project, used all of my absolutely crazy trained thoughts to figure out how these things would fit in, be able to give these palettes that I actually have always wanted in this project from the beginning, some love. So that's it, that you have it. That is everything I am doing. Wish me luck and um, keep your fingers crossed that Deb and Danny don't like hunt me down and smack me for totally screwing up their entire project because this is an absolutely wonderful project and for all of the women out there who are doing this that are doing it by the rules good for you i'm so proud of you i couldn't quite do it all right now after all of that chaos it doesn't get better guys it does not get better because i'm going to give you your music moment and with the music moment the thing that i am giving you is the song Take It to the Limit by the Eagles. Now, the reason I am giving you this song is because my first bartending job back in my early 20s, I worked at a place that was closed Sundays and Mondays. 
on Sunday nights then, and you know I'm from Minnesota, you know I'm from the Twin Cities. Sunday nights, they used to have a special at Hog's Breath, which is a bar in Little Canada, technically. Um, and so we, because we were all off Sundays, a bunch of us used to go up Sundays and we would go and have some beers. They had a dance floor, they had a DJ. I don't, I haven't been in there in years, so I don't know if they, I mean, they still do, I'm assuming. The bar is still there, the dance floor hasn't changed. But what they used to do back in the day, can't say that it happens anymore, like I said, I don't know, is the very last song that they played every night that they were open was the Eagles song, Take It to the Limit. So for me, in my mind, this is last call bar closing song. Every time I hear it, that's what I think of is this is the very last song that they would play at the Hog's Breath, and that meant get your last dance in, finish off your last drink, whatever, it was time to go. And the lights were going to come on as soon as the song ended. So that's why you're getting this for your music moment. Now, let's talk a little bit about the song. All right. So Take It to the Limit, obviously an Eagles song, but this is the song that Randy Meisner sings. And there aren't a lot of those out there. In fact, I don't know if there are any more out there, but this is a song that he actually started writing. And when it came time for them to be recording um, One of These Nights, which was their fourth studio album, and it's the album that this song is from, he didn't have it ready yet. So he went in with what he had, and then um, Glenn Fry and uh, Don Henley helped him finish it off. And of the different songs that he's written, he said that kind of was a process for them, that like he would have something in his head or have a partial idea, partial song, something like that, and then he would bring it to the guys and they would help him like round it out, finish it off, whatever. But this song is um, good and bad in some ways. Okay. It came out November 15th, 1975. It was the third single. Uh, of off of the one of these nights albums like i said it's the one where randy randy sings which was not super common for him to be singing it as a lead vocalist and even don don headley at one point said as many songs as he took the lead on when they added um glenn fry to the band don henley's comment was why would i keep singing when i've got glenn <laughs> because he enjoyed glenn fry's voice so much so that's kind of the main singing duo of what most of the stuff is that you've heard on the radio for all of your life, basically, because they have been around forever. Um, This song also became problematic, and it's the last song that... uh, It's the last song that Randy did before he left the band. This song was actually kind of part of him leaving the band. Now, I did not see the Eagles until the Hell Freezes Over tour, so at that point it, was, it wasn't all the original guys because Joe Walsh was with them. And I think this song actually had the original band member before Joe Walsh, even. I don't remember. Um, okay, yes, Bernie Lieben was replaced by Joe Walsh. So I never saw, but he was on this song, so I never saw him playing this song because when I saw them, Joe Walsh was with them. So Randy was never comfortable with his singing, I don't think. And there's a lot of high notes. This is one of those songs where there was a high demand for it. And um, I'm going to sneeze. The guys really wanted to do this live and they wanted Randy to sing. Well, he would get very nervous about that and be worried that he wasn't going to hit some of the notes. And he also was doing some of those high notes in Hotel California. He ended up being kind of stressed about this. So when they were on tour at one point, and I don't remember what year it was. uh, I don't know if it even says. But Miser had been struggling hitting the high notes for Hotel California. And he actually then at one point did not do Take It to the Limit. He just kind of refused to do the song. It ended up with a, after the show, like almost a physical fight. At this point, Randy's suffering from like bleeding stomach ulcers. He refuses to do this song. The guys get really mad at him because the fans requested this song. The fans really loved it. And the band liked it. And they were like, absolutely, yes, have him do it. It's, you know, like I said, he's not one who took lead on many of their songs. And it, I think it was, if it was, was it Glenn Fry? I think it was... Yeah. Glenn Fry and Randy Meister actually almost got into a fist fight after the show about the fact that he was not going to be doing because he wouldn't do this song. 
And that was one of the things that led to him leaving the band because he was getting overstressed out and the touring was taking a toll on him. It was taking a toll on his voice. It was obviously giving him ulcers. Things were not great. Now, did he then, you know, yes, he has done stuff with them since, whatever. But kind of a fun fact about the song because it is def definitely one of their more unique things as far as the singing, the fact that it actually caused a member, the person who wrote the song, to leave the band, that it caused a fist fight, all the fun stuff. So why did Hog's Breath pick this as their closing song? I have absolutely no clue. But every single night that they were open, this was their closing song. And this is what I'm bringing you. So you're going to find a video of that down in the description box for your viewing and listening pleasure. Oh, I'm actually scared to put this video out, you guys. So hopefully Deb and Danny don't get too mad at me over this. Um, if they do, I'll be taking this video down. So for those of you that get to see it, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for indulging me. Thank you for letting me spend some time with you. I truly do appreciate it. Until next time, everybody. See ya. Bye.